Today's question, how did we get from this to this? On today's Deeper History. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for another episode of Deeper History. Today, we are with Mr. David Rice, the man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Rice, England for thousands of years was ruled by monarch. That's correct. Now, England is not. It's more of a democracy. How did we get from this a constitutional monarchy. To this, constitutional monarchy. Constitutional monarchy, yes. And actually, you you have Henry there, uh, and uh, the uh, the present prime minister actually started back much much before Henry. Uh, Twelve fifteen, the uh, uh, Magna Carta, uh, which was a document signed by the present king, and the nobles that he employed um, for his military exercises, specifically against Scotland. Scotland's gonna be, keep coming up over and over and over again. Well, they just refused to fight unless they were compensated. Now remember, we're not talking about me or you, we're talking about the landed gentry. And in turn for their services in war and their men's services in war, they were paid in land. They got owner, well, not ownership, because the ownership of the land stayed primarily with the monarchy. But they got the use of it. Uh, they got the titles that went with it. They got the esteem, the the, the riches, and everything. Well, and let's review. Getting land in England at that time was not as straightforward as going and buying a piece of property in the United States today. Well, if you look on the map, you'll notice a very small place to have ruled the world. <laughs> this, it's a country just a little bit larger than North Mississippi, basically. Uh, spread out a little bit, but land was an absolute uh, vestiture in wealth. Look, uh, if you, you, you had land, you had it. Uh, and so to keep the loyalty of his nobleman, really he's not worried about keeping the loyalty of his subjects because they, they, are, they are going to be his subjects one way or the other. It's a very small difference between a dictator and a monarch and that would be the gun. Uh, so, uh, so they meet and he concedes that they will be treated differently. They will be. They will have more land and more fiefdoms. And really, this this sort of came about. It's the story starts even back. The the demise of the of the Roman Empire left a vacuum. Right. And all over Europe, specifically in England, where the Romans had a, a, a large presence there. Uh, for, for almost a thousand, that happened in the beginning of the fifth century, and now we're talking about the beginning of the 13th century. At that period of time, 800 years, it's just one small fiefdom after another. Some of them were Anglo-Saxon, some of them were Vikings, some of them were Danish, and they, they vied for uh, land, primarily. And so you had all of these little kingdoms, and, uh, and kings, too, and uh, by this time, Charles I was, uh, was the ruling monarch of England. This is really an English thing. We had, uh, uh, we've got Wales and Scotland, but they're not, other than England's attempt to conquer Scotland, uh, they're not really involved in this. And it really started off just as a, almost like over a coffee table. Well, what are we gonna do? I mean, how are we gonna, how are we gonna 
divide up the spoils specifically of Scotland and how are we going to uh, control this. So a very small group of people. But, oh, very small. And that really was the first parliament. It was, it was uh, impromptu, it was very uh, um, unorganized, uh, it had no, uh, no uh, record of how they do business. It really was. And as it began to grow, by 1265, uh, Montrose had uh, kind of moved Charles off the throne, take, kind of taken over from Seth, grabbed a little bit more power, and then you had you constantly had this battle between it. it they, the kings did not go quietly into the night. You had this battle going on back and forth, back and forth, against the backdrop of let's go conquer Scotland, and, and it really was. It, and once again, it goes back. The, the, uh, the Romans never conquered Scotland. They built a wall called Hadrian's Wall to keep the Picts and the Scots out of Britain, their, their Rome, because they, they, were, they were wild warriors. So if you can't beat them, just wall them in. <laughs> just wall them in, that's right. Uh, and all sorts of, I, I walked uh, uh, about 15 miles one day uh, at a place in, um, in uh, Suffolk that's called uh, the Devil's Dyke. And it was a, 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 a rude embankment that the Romans had put up against the, the marauding tribe. So that's been going on for a while, this, this uh, Scottish thing. And uh, in fact, in a few hundred years, Scotland's going to be under the same king, but with a different parliament. It will only be later when the United Kingdom, which would then been Scotland, and Wales uh, are joined as the Parliament for the United Kingdom. We don't have Ireland yet. Uh, in fact, it, it's it's really sort of comical when the Irish finally they had a Parliament too. Every, people were catching on. Well, we caught on because the the fundamental concept of our government is a mixture of. Uh, constitutional monarchy, Roman Senate, Greek democracy, it's just all mixed into one. Well, the, the, the rather humorous thing about it is there was a, a part still is today, Sean Finn in, in, in Ireland, which is a, a rabid nationalist, but they had a member in the Irish uh, Parliament. So when the Parliament of the United Kingdom invited Ireland to be there, that one member of the Irish Parliament couldn't be there because if he had, he'd have been arrested and hung. So, so his seat was, was vacant. At the turn of the uh, uh, 17th century, we get the English Bill of Rights, and uh, which William and Mary brought back from Belgium when they assumed the throne and uh, and took over for James, who had been uh, who had been exiled from the throne, of and they introduced the, the uh, English Bill of Rights. Who's the king at this time? Uh, James. James. James the first, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, and and William and Mary were joint monarchs, but their intent was to turn to to turn loose of the monarchy as a, a, a because it's, it's, they're constantly battling back and forth. Parliament, monarchy, parliament, the monarchy. Uh, and it's during this time and and before there was the. There was the appearance that uh, there were people other than lords being in the parliament. Because up to there, it had really been, in a kind of a colloquial basis, the House of Lords. And but this is the wealthiest of the this wealthy. Is a, well, well, they're wealthy of the wealthy because they have been, uh, they have been at the king's beck and call. Right. And have been rewarded at, 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 with the titles and all, all of that. But as we look back in the records, we find more and more un-royal royalty and it turns out that you you could actually buy a seat and so you had the introduction of some commoners so much so that it became a problem and that uh, toward the end of the four, uh, end of the 14th century they passed a law that you had to have land worth 40 shillings to be a member of the of the House of Lords which was the only member later on then they, they would have uh, what is really today the governing body is the House of Commons. So these are this is an elected position. If you see uh, 
uh, if you see a, a, a car with an MP tag on it, that's all it has is MP means member of parliament. He's a member of the House of Commons that the Lords really don't want that much publicity to begin with. And they do, in most cases, have to agree on something to pass it. Uh, most of the time, they're really sort of absentee, the House of Lords is. The Brecon thing, uh, that was uh, that was a House of Commons move. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's what they have today. So that instead of it being, well, of course you can't forget Cromwell who, who uh, had the king ex executed and for 11, 14 years ran it as, as the uh, closest to a constitutional monarchy as they've ever had. I'm a constitutional de democracy as they've ever had. And then we, we know uh, saner minds prevail. William and Mary prevailed on the he heels of that, opened it up for uh, for representation from what would be the common people. It's much like the same situation in the United States. Uh, there's parties, the Labor Party, uh, the uh, uh, Conservative Party. Uh, there's more parties that vie for the positions and the party with the most uh, power then appoints a prime minister. And uh, so that they have had, and because of that, they have had a fluid situation in the prime minister. I mean, you had uh, in World War One, you had Winston Churchill was, kind of lost a little faith, a little face for the public because of his uh, invasion in, in Italy and kind of fell. He was still a member of parliament, still re retained all that, still right. had his voice. Um, then uh, you have Chamberlain come along, who is a pacifist, uh, really because of his pacifism, uh, Hitler gets kind of a, 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 a carte blanche to take over Europe. Chamberlain, I mean, uh, Churchill comes back in, his party wins in the election, he becomes a prime minister. Uh, he's much better at wartime consigliere than uh, he is at peacetime. Uh, all the effects of the war accumulate to make a bad economy. He gets kicked out. Somebody else comes back in. Then he comes back in again. So it's uh, uh, oftentimes when we when we view what's going on in our uh, political situation, it, it it may seem as just a little bit more um, workable. So let's rewind just a little bit. Okay. At what point? then in England's history, does that blurry line really make a jump? Because I feel like at one point, I, it took hundreds of years to get there, but surely at one point, that was Cromwell. The switch after, was really flipped. At, after Cromwell, the monarchy could never have regained that power. Was but, there a reason that all of that took place? Scotland. Go back to Scotland again. The fear was that if uh, uh, Scotland was allowed to be uh, a part of the United Kingdom Parliament that immediately uh, there would be the reemergence of the Roman Catholic Church in Scotland right. and the reemergence of the Ro Roman Catholic Church would have uh, would have dissolved a lot of the uh, uh, Anglican movement up to then and uh, so when, when James was dethroned that pretty much was the spell the was end. The, that spell the end there were other fights uh, uh, I'm assuming the revolution the American Revolution oh it was enormous was, yeah. was a big deal for Englanders because for our viewers who may not know the revolution ended up costing the people of England a, a small fortune oh yeah our part of it was 83 million dollars. How would you like to have had and that? money at that and, and, and money at that, that time? How would you like that on George Washington's plate the first day? What would eighty-three million dollars equate to in today's money? Oh, probably a uh, a factor of uh, a hundred, any hundred, hundred times that. We're talking about millions of dollars, and uh, still to this day, it's the most marvelous military victory ever known to mankind. We were certainly the underdog of that oh, war. Oh. Oh, oh, just a little bit. Yeah. You've got what at the time is the most powerful military in the world. Yeah. It would be like a small nation today 
beating the United States at war. I mean, we're, you know, I saw not too long ago in National Geographic. Uh, I got interested in why the uh, why the lady on the Diet Coke commercial says yurt. So I, I kind of, you know, I, I can't. I can't stand not to know things. So, turns out that Yurk is a Mongolian house. It's a it looks like a cake, and uh, National Geographic was showing a picture of it. And off to the side was an emblem of Coca Cola. And I'm thinking, wow, that's coverage, that's coverage. But but it said of the British Empire that the sun never set on the British Empire, that they were everywhere, and how. A force, especially the naval force, how a force like that can get defeated by basically what is a ragtag bunch of of, of farmers and and uh, blacksmiths and bankers and lawyers and uh, it, it's just an amazing story. And England loses the revolutionary, the American, and what do they call it? Do they call it the American Revolution over there? Yes. Okay, so they 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 lose the war. All of the tax base that they were getting from the Americas yeah. is now evaporated. Exactly. And that was so sizable, by the way. On top of all of the resources that they were getting from the Americas, and then all of the money that they've now spent in going over there and fighting, and then pulling all of their soldiers back. So a small, just fortune. And I'm assuming that. Uh, that, that also caused some tension between the ruling king of that time, which I cannot even remember who was the king in power. George. At that time, and then the uh, parliament, surely they they take more power from, from oh, the yeah. king at that time. And, and behind the scenes, George. George is a king who is uh, diminutive in size for his... Uh, for his uh, inauguration, not the inauguration, but for his crowning. He has a gilded coach made, it's over 15 feet long, okay, to take him from St. James, okay, to Westminster Abbey to be crowned. And that's the last time it was ever used. So, one time. <laughs> one time, last time it was ever used. So, you can imagine what's going on in Parliament when you have a king who's really, really, really interested in his image. And by the way, there was some very conciliatory movement in Parliament to say, hey, why, why don't we talk about this? Can't, can't we be uh, can't we can't we be at peace with our with our colonial brothers? Uh, and today, by the way, uh, a politician spends a couple of hundred thousand dollars on a trip that Americans don't like, and it's all over the news for, right. yeah. <laughs> for a month. Cornwallis is supposed to have said that uh, uh, to one of his generals, uh, uh, when he's explaining, the, I think it was the Battle of Calpins in, in, in South Carolina, he said, you know, when this is over, we'll reestablish commerce with our brethren. There you have it right there. That that was the plan. It, it it wouldn't have worked to have totally demolished us. Oh, they wanted the American oh. resources, which is why they were over here in that, the first that, place. Absolutely. They didn't want to lose and the, remember the that, sugar stick. Remember that at the top of that, of that uh, pile is their most hated enemy. And at the bottom is a struggling country called Spain that's just lost their entire navy in a hurricane, by the way. How they never figured out that that <laughs> September to November is not a bad That's, time, right? <laughs> so. Yes. So, uh, and then of course the French also, uh, who stepped in and sort of saved our butts there uh, at the end. They did. <clears throat> so, all right. Well, so now you know how we got from oh, oh, here to here. Yes, we did. With a little deeper history. Thank you, sir. You're, You're most welcome. welcome.